pear and chocolate are a match made in heaven, and this Italian pear and chocolate cake is about to become your favorite. Let me show you how to make it. We're going to start by peeling our pears. Pear skin has sort of a fuzzy texture, so you want to try and get it all off. Otherwise, it could ruin the texture of your cake. My nonna used to eat an apple or a pear every single day. After lunch, she'd sit there and she'd peel either the apple or the pear with a paring knife. And honestly, to watch her do it was masterful. I'm not sure I could do it without a peeler. I'm topping and tailing my pears. Then slice them down the middle and remove that little woody core with a spoon. A melon baller would also work really well. Just scoop out the seeds and you should have a nice little cleaned out pear. I'll admit, pears aren't my favorite fruit to eat raw, but cooked in this cake, they are absolutely delicious. Cut your pears into about half inch cubes. So if you have a really big chunky pear like I do, you wanna cut a slice off the side first, then cut it lengthwise and into your chunks. Set the cubes aside, ready to toss into our cake later. Here are my three reserved pears. They're the most consistent in size and shape, and therefore they'll give the most beautiful appearance on the top of the cake. We'll slice these in half and remove the seeds the same way. To make our fan pattern, we're going to leave the top of the pear intact about half an inch or so, and then slice down the length of our pear. Don't worry if a few of them break. We can rearrange them when we place them on the cake. You want these slices to be about one centimeter apart, and that will fan out just like this on the top of our cake. Continue with the rest of your pears, then set them aside while we prepare our batter. If you don't wanna slice your pears and make them look really fancy on the top, you can just chop them in cubes and dot them all over the batter. Line a 10 inch springform pan. When I line a springform, I like to keep the edges of the parchment intact. It helps me peel it more easily from the bottom of the cake once it's baked. Preheat your oven to 175 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. To your mixing bowl, add 150 milliliters, two thirds of a cup of neutral oil. I'm using avocado oil, and this one just happened to be very green. Add 225 grams, one and a quarter cups of sugar, three whole eggs, and six grams, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Whip this up until it's doubled in size. You don't have to use a stand mixer. You can do this with a whisk or with a hand mixer. To 330 grams, two and three quarter cups of flour, add 45 grams or six tablespoons of corn flour. Give that a little whisk together, then add in 12 grams, three teaspoons of baking powder. We're going to alternate adding our flour with 115 milliliters, half a cup of whole milk. Start by adding in one third of your flour, then add in half of your milk, so a quarter cup. Once that's all mixed in, add in another third of your flour, and then the remaining milk. Finally, add in the last third of your flour. Mix on low until everything's been combined. Then with a spatula, run it around your bowl and get all of those last little bits of flour that didn't get picked up. Now for the star ingredient, we're adding in our chopped pears and it worked out to about two cups. Then add in one cup, 190 grams of chocolate chips. You can use chocolate chunks in this recipe as well. I actually love when you get a giant piece of chocolate in a slice of cake, but the chocolate chips distribute themselves perfectly. Then pour your batter into your pre-prepared pan. Now for the decoration. Fan out your pears before putting them on top of your cake. Give them a really good squish down with your hand and then place it so that the fanned edge is touching the outer ring of the springform pan. And like you can see with that little broken piece, it just slides right in there and nobody will even notice. Evenly space the pear halves around the top of the cake. I ended up using five pear halves, so I had one spare and that's going into the oven. This will need to bake for an hour to an hour and a half until a tester comes out clean. I like to give the cake a little test with my cake tester to make sure it comes out clean. That way you know the cake is perfectly done on the inside. While it's still warm, I like to run a knife around the outside edge of the cake. This makes sure that as it cools and contracts, none of those bits of pear or the top rips apart. Once the cake has cooled to room temperature, remove it from the tin, then place it on a serving platter. Give the cake a light dusting of powdered or icing sugar. You don't want to go too heavy handed with the powdered sugar. You wanna make sure the pears shine through. This will keep in an airtight container for two to three days, any longer than that, and pop it in the refrigerator for up to a week. Look at the beautiful sponge texture. This cake will always make me think of my nonna and her love of pears. 
If you're looking for another classic Italian cake, you have to try my three ingredient torta di noce, walnut cake. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next week.